So my name is Dominic Persona. First of all, I'm, it's a big honor to be here on TED. I'm a, I think I'm the only one who doesn't really did high education in school, so I'm just a cook. I'm a cook, and long time ago, when I was thin and I had long hair, I fell in love with chocolate. And now I'm using my uh, influence of the kitchen in to create chocolates. It's very important, don't start eating the chocolates. That's something we're gonna do together. Okay, let's pray. All right. One of the things I do is using my influence of the kitchen in to create funny chocolates. And uh, one of my other big passions in my life is to go on expedition, when I have the permission of my wife, to go on expedition and to look for wonderful cocoa beans. Uh, she loves shoes and I love the beans. And uh, I had the honor to travel around the world, to Brazil, to Peru, to Mexico, to see all lots of plantations. And when you go to Belgium, to the, the cooking school or the pastry school, you learn that there are three types of cocoa beans, Criollo, Forastero, Trinitario. Now, long time ago, in 2009, I had the honor to win a great prize with my book, and I had to do presentations all over the world. And one of the presentations I did was in uh, uh, Sao Paulo, in Brazil, and they have an agriculture university, and the professor, after the presentation, talked to me, and only in the Amazon, starting from Peru, going down to Brazil, they already discovered 24,000 different varieties of cocoa beans, so we still have a big job to do. But the great thing is, all the beans, most of the beans, have really a different flavor and different natural aromas, like olives or tobacco. That's very interesting for people who are quit smoking. You can eat chocolate. <laughs> and when we do some research, together with my friend Bernard Laus, the scientist, it calls food pairing. What does food pairing mean? They do research on certain ingredients, for example, oysters. And then they can see an oyster have the same flavor molecules like kiwi. So it means we can make a dish with kiwi and oysters, or strawberry and peas, very funny things, or chocolate from Peru and cauliflower, or chocolate from Venezuela and smoked salmon. Mm -hmm. So that was really interesting, and I started playing in my uh, little chocolate kitchen, and we did some very funny uh, experiments. But I had the honor, I tried again, yes, to uh, work together with Heston Blumenthal, and Heston is the number three chef of the world, a great restaurant, the Fat Duck, amazing. And every six months, we try to get together, and we do some funny stuff some funny experimental stuff. Believe me, 90% goes to the garbage. It's worth it, nothing, but 10% it's very interesting. And one of the guys who worked with the fat, uh, the, the fat duck think tank, it's a hard word, uh, is a great professor of Oxford University, and he explained us the important thing about food and emotion. It sounds quite uh, university stuff, but it's very easy. When you eat an oyster, in a restaurant, or you eat the same oyster on the beach, the one on the beach is going to be much better because you're in the emotion of the basic product. You smell the beach, you hear it, and you can see it. So that's the thing we're going to do today. We're going to do some tasting together with food and emotion. Okay, the first uh, smells can already start to go into the room because I'm going to talk a little bit more. So one of the dishes of Heston was inspired by food and emotion, and it's a great dish. You have a wooden uh, plate. He filled it with sand, and he filled it with the smell of the beach. And then there's some glass, and we try to recreate the beach. Eatable sand, salad of seaweed, very funny stuff. And the great thing is, when the people eat it, they have to listen. They have to put the iPod in their head, and then they hear the sound of their dish. Okay, so the first chocolate we're gonna eat, yes, it's a grass one. It's an origin chocolate of Vanuatu for the girls, and I guess there are a lot here in the university who aren't married yet. Before you, he says, you want to marry me? Say, yes, darling, but I want to go on honeymoon to Vanuatu. It's the most wonderful island of the world. Palm trees, amazing. 
So an origin chocolate of Vanuatu, and when I saw the results of food pairing, I saw some touches of grass. Say, that's funny, but not the grass from Holland for smoking. <laughs> it's the grass from the garden. So what did he do? We made a, a chocolate filling, a ganache, of white chocolate of Dominican Republic, and we put some fresh grass from the garden. Don't eat it yet, please. So we're gonna, I hope you still have it. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe you have some boxes more. So we're gonna see a movie. The smells of grass from the garden is getting into the room. And I will say, eat now, and then you will eat your chocolates. All righty, here we go. So I hope the flavor gets more intense while you're into the emotion. Really try to get into the movie. Okay, we can start the second smell. Um, the second chocolate we're gonna eat, it's uh, inspired by an origin chocolate of Peru. And this morning, my team, we are 39 people uh, staff now, my team waked up very early, especially for you, especially for you. <laughs> We, made, uh, we opened the oysters, we made a redu reduction of the, the oyster juice, then we put some cream, then we mix it with white chocolate, and then finally we make a kind of milkshake with the oyster meat. Then we put some vodka, it's very good, oyster and vodka, another food pairing. And then finally we make the oyster, don't eat it yet, I see some people going like, don't eat it yet. I hope you'll learn it, you're university people, no? So, the same thing. We try to get into the movie. In the meantime, we have the yodium. Imagine you're in love and you walk with your girlfriend on the beach. The yodium. All right, here we go. Okay, for the last chocolate we're gonna taste, I, you need a little demonstration, so I'm gonna show you how it goes. You have to wait again, don't eat it yet, and it's very, it's very tet today. <laughs> so, when you will see the slide eat now, then you have a little squeezer, you squeeze, so you squeeze. <laughs> And then you can suck on the nipple, okay? The, the smells, the baby smells has to go in the room, okay? So it's the marshmallow we made from, uh, you know, marshmallow, the marshmallows, yes? And then we made a, a white chocolate of, uh, it's from uh, Ecuador, a very great white chocolate. And then we, we put the little color, so we have the same color like the skin, and then we make in wine gum, like the teddy bears, we made the little nipples, so get into the mood. It's a very important smell and a very important taste because it's the first taste ever of our life. I mean, for the lucky ones, mommy who gives her breasts, okay? Start a movie. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, eat now and enjoy. Oh, that's a little problem. Well, don't worry about that slide. Normally you see the baby sucking. It's funny. I mean, my little message I want to give here, you have, of course, you have the, the smell of uh, baby products. But it's very important that we go back to the first smell we got. And I think it's very important. Sometimes you have kids, daddy, I don't like it. Mommy, I don't like it. Let them taste. Don't let them eat everything because otherwise they get a little paranoid about food and that's not the idea. But really, please let them taste. The more you taste as a child, the more you will be remember your food bank in your brain. So it's, it's really important. Okay, we can go to the other slide. So I work together with some scientists. They're very funny. They're really, really important for me to work together with them. And one day, my good friend Bernard Laus, he says, Dominique, you know, natural and chocolate, there's a love hormone. I was like, hmm? It's the same hormone that leaves our brains after an orgasm. <laughs> so that's interesting. So one of the ideas I got was to make small Valentine hearts with an overdose of the love hormone. <laughs> Badly enough, after doing some research, our body has a protection system and it breaks it down. But in Belgium, from the guys in the States, we never give up. So uh, we try to de-block de the block system and it sits with a little Chinese pe pepper. And one day you can only eat 10 grams. I'm very sorry, I don't have it in the box. It's illegal. <laughs> but um, one day the chocolate was ready and we eat it and it's amazing. You can't walk anymore. You're really like, Whoa, and you're very happy. Very happy. <laughs> so I call the Food and Drug Administration and says, Dominique, I know you're a little uh, open-minded, but it's too dangerous. It's the same hormone they use for the pills, for Prozac, to make the people happy. So we couldn't make it. Okay, next slide. Same again, after a few beers, Bernard told me, Domi, you know, natural and the lipsticks, the Chanel's and the Dior's and I don't know, all the big brands of lipstick, it's based on cocoa butter. It's cocoa butter, it doesn't really have a, sp have a taste. So I changed it and I made, oh, it's hot in here, I can see it on my lipstick. I make lipsticks with real chocolate. So in Belgium, we have a dessert who's quite famous called Dame Blanche. And when I have to serve it, I serve the people two uh, little bowls of vanilla ice cream. And instead of putting chocolate on the dish, I give everybody a lipstick. I'm going to show you how it works. It's very easy. It's a little gothic. OK. But the idea is, so you have the ice cream, and then you eat your vanilla, and you have the chocolate flavors who come. But it's very fun. You can kiss with it, and you can make marks on your body. It's kinky stuff. So I'm sure a lot of you will have fun with this tonight. Uh, there's one thing that's quite important, and definitely for the guys, the girls know that already. Never, ever, ever put a lipstick in your pockets. It can be very embarrassing when you're walking into Leuven playing Mr. Cool. So I warn them, never ever put the lipstick in your pocket. A little while ago, I had the honor with uh, uh, Sergio Hermann, who's a great buddy of mine. He's the number one chef in Holland. And I have the honor to work with the greatest chefs of the world. It's really very inspiring for me. That's maybe another message. The new philosophy in the kitchen is not when I was young and thin and long hair. I had to work in Paris, the big three Michelin star restaurants, and everything was secret. The new philosophy now in the kitchen, and it's really, it's true, is that we share information and we're, we're not, we don't want to hide anything. So it's very important to work together to get it to a great result. And that was thing, one of the things I do. But anyway, uh, a few years ago, I had the honor to, uh, together with Sergio Herman, to organize the birthday party of the Rolling Stones, you know. Ta -da -da. And they call us and it says, Dominique, Sergio, uh, yeah, Ron, he's getting 60, and Charlie Watts, he's getting uh, 61. We want to organize a surprise party, like we do, uh, behind the curtains, surprise. And put some jokes into the menu, that's uh, no problem. So one of the things we did, we get inspired by the old uh, rock and roll grandpas, 
and we get inspired. Oh, I have to make a kind of massage cream now. <laughs> so we get inspired by it sniffing. And uh, in the beginning, we did some tests with just sniffing chocolate. But when you sniff chocolate, it's like a little blob. It doesn't work. Then we did some tests with chili pepper. It's a bad idea. When you sniff that, it hurts a lot. So finally, we made a mixture with mint, ginger, and chocolate. And that's really, really funny. I'm going to try to show you. All right. So the idea, it's very simple. It's inspired by my grandpa's sniffing machine. So one, two, three. <laughs> In the beginning, it's very minty and ginger. And then the chocolate getting into your brains. And normally, there's a beautiful waiter who comes with the dessert who's made from strawberry and cream. Thank you very much. Let's make it a sweeter world.